Welcome once again to Really American. I am Michael Hang. Let's get going. Okay, so Trump decided to hold a rally today in North Carolina. Not unusual for him to hold his hate cult rallies. But what's odd is the venue, the city and the venue where he decided to hold it. He decided to hold it in very liberal Asheville, North Carolina, which always goes for a Democratic candidate no matter what. So not only does he hold it in Asheville, North Carolina, a city which clearly would sooner probably support um, syphilis than Donald Trump. And again, I think Trump is a version of syphilis. So my apologies to the venereal disease. But the, let's look at the venue itself. All right. As a user on X pointed out, it's a dump of a venue and it only holds like a maximum under 2,500 people. So Trump is basically a old timey hack road comic playing small bingo halls, which kind of makes sense considering that, you know, the majority of his supporters are rotting geriatric boomers with one foot in the grave anyway. So it makes sense for him to actually be speaking at bingo halls, which is typically where those people live anyway. <laughs> this is the actual venue. I'm fairly certain a COVID convention would have attracted more people. Jesus Christ, save America by spay and neutering maggots. Guys, I think you mean to be saying Russia, Russia, Russia. Psst. Hey, maggot morons. Kamala's running for president of the United States, not prime minister of Great Britain. She's from here. Democrats are also from America. Yeah. But it's interesting that your head is so far up the ass of a Putin humping all pro-Russia treasonous criminal that you must have forgotten that. And now Trumpy Dumpy is about to enter the stage. What amazing, caring, loving, empathetic, patriotic, coherent things do you think he had to say? The way she wants it. I mean, the clown that she picked as a vice president, this guy's a clown. He was so bad. You know, when uh, Minneapolis was burning down, he didn't want to call in the National Guard. I got him on, I got him on the phone. You got to get the National Guard. Get it, get it, get it. I'm telling you, if I didn't force it upon him, you might not have the city. Remember seeing Bate chat for two and a half hours? Two and a half hours being grilled by Elon. And it, we, had a, we had a good time, actually. We're talking about something we love, our country. Much easier when you... Under Kamala's extreme high-cost energy policy known as net zero, you know what net zero, they, they have no idea what it means, by the way. It's net zero. What does that mean? Nobody knows. Ask her what it means. We're going to go to a net zero policy. What does that mean? Uh, I have no idea. Do you think that's going to lift your prices a little bit? Think of that. They're going to take away 84 percent and the real stuff. That's the stuff that powers the plants. It's not wind that goes around and around and... Darling, let's watch the President's State of the Union speech tonight. Uh, I'm sorry, we won't be able to do it. The wind isn't blowing, darling. We have no electricity. Many people say that the only reason the stock market is up is because people think I am going to win. Did you ever hear that? But there was one day a couple of weeks ago when they weren't thinking that and you saw what happened. This will be in 1929 style crash, you know, I have one. You think we can get a silver alert out there for a crazy senile Florida man who thinks he's president and thinks he could be president again in order to avoid prison is trying to talk in front of a group of sheep? Because that's what appears to be going on. Many people, whenever he says that, you know, it's absolutely nobody. And when he does the accordion thing super fast, no, <laughs> nobody is saying that except the voices in your head, Donald. My God. Well, to give us a normal perspective, the fact remains that North Carolina is now in play. And what's even better is that Kamala Harris and Tim Walz, they're going to be showing up pretty soon into Charlotte, North Carolina. They're going to be rocking that place. They're going to blow the lid off the state, for Christ's sake, okay? So North Carolina is, in fact, in play. And let's look a bit more into that. 
on the head, the fact that Mark Robinson's on the head of the gubernatorial ticket for Republicans, really a radical figure, uh, all things considered, relative to other gubernatorial candidates on the Republican side. This could be the state that kind of under the radar, Harris could flip which makes her path to getting to 270 a lot easier. Suddenly, you don't have to be so preoccupied with Michigan or Wisconsin. Obviously, Pennsylvania is huge. You still need to have that one. Uh, but yeah, that, North Carolina is one of those under-the-radar targets for Harris. It is, John, extraordinary, too, to think about where we were a month ago when Joe Biden was viewed as being the nominee, obviously talking about states like Minnesota, maybe going right. Republican, that they were going to lose Democratic strongholds. They were throwing them out New Jersey, forget Nevada and Georgia and Arizona and all the other places that they had started to write off a little bit and thinking we have to win these three states. That dynamic has changed completely. Now we're talking about Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, and maybe North Carolina now tipping in the direction of Kamala Harris. A total flip in the way we're sort of viewing the map at this point. Here's how things changed. During the Republican National Convention, the Biden team put out a campaign memo that basically said our only path to victory was Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Yes. That's the only way they could do it. At the same time, the Republicans gave a briefing to reporters at the convention saying North Carolina's in the bag. We're not even going to worry about that. What happened this week? Donald Trump showing up in North Carolina. What else happened this week? They put in an ad buy in North Carolina. So that shows you how they are now concerned about that state. Vice President Harris will also be in North Carolina this week. She'll be there Friday, Mike Barnacle. And interestingly, both of the candidates are using that state to talk about the economy. Trump is going to talk about it today. Obviously, complaints about inflation and deriding what they've seen from the Biden White House. And then Kamala Harris on Friday in Raleigh is going to defend the record of the economy and try to silence some people who think that's one of her vulnerabilities. You know, to Willie's point, the sea change in American politics over just the past few weeks has been astounding, mm. as, you would, as you indicated. So back when President Biden was on the ballot, it seems like certain states like Nevada, I mean, the um, southwestern states, even the, you know, uh, northern Midwestern states, the critical ones, the blue wall states of like Michigan and Wisconsin, they seem to be like they were doubting that if they could carry that. Certainly not sure if they would ever be able to carry North Carolina and Georgia. But ever since he dropped out, President Biden and Kamala Harris have stepped in. Everything's coming into place. North Carolina is looking more and more like it could be a win. They could put that in the Democratic column, which would mean like you don't really need Michigan or Wisconsin, as he pointed out. I mean, it would be great to have, and I will never dismiss campaigning there. I mean, still campaign there very hard and do everything you can. But And Pennsylvania, of course, is something you always will need and want. But just the very notion that Kamala Harris can carry states like former President Barack Obama did in 2008 when he took North Carolina, pretty unprecedented, considering where we were a month and a half ago. Anyway, I am Michael Hayne. This is really American. If you like our content, please hit that subscribe button. Check me out on TikTok at Mike Hain Comedian. Talk to you later.